Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be my review for Glee Season 5, Episode 19, Old Dog, New Tricks. And this was a fantastic episode. By the way, this was the episode that Chris Colfer directed, um, which I was really looking forward to it because I heard that Chris Colfer was going to direct it. It was going to be very Kurt-centric, and, you know, Kurt really hasn't had too much to do this season. He's had some stuff to do, but most of it has been related to Blaine. And this episode finally had nothing to do with him and Blaine's relationship, which I was actually kind of happy about, because that's basically what's been this whole season, is whatever Kurt does, it has to be related to Blaine, and this episode was nothing like that. And I, I love this episode, and I really hope that Chris Colfer directs more episodes, because he did a fantastic job on this episode. I loved everything on this episode. And I just thought it was probably one of the best episodes of the season. Not the best episode of the season. Opening night is still the best episode of the season because just of how good it was. But this episode was still fantastic, and I loved every minute of it. So let's get to the main plot, which, of course, was Kurt. Kurt, basically, at this point, all of his friends are very, very focused on other things. You know, Blaine is so focused on uh, June, you know, uh, hanging out with June and everything. Rachel is focused on funny girls. Santana's focused on everything, and... Marseille and Sam are focused on things. Marseille is focusing on her album release. So everyone's focused on a lot of things. So Kirk kind of realized he's kind of the fish out of water here uh, in the in this group because he has nothing he's really doing. He really doesn't have anything. And it's kind of sad that Kurt doesn't really seem to have much of anything to do. And he wants to have um, something to do. But it, it's definitely very uh, interesting there. What, you know... Um, so what happens is he ends up, you know, what happens is he ends up, um, basically meeting up with this, um, this person named Maggie Banks, who is played by the adorable, and when I say adorable, I mean adorable June Squibb. She was absolutely adorable, and, you know, basically she is this Broadway, they're talking and everything, she tells him that they're doing a show, at an old, at a retirement home called Peter, you know, they're doing Peter Pan the Musical at a retirement home, and she wants him to go see it because they don't have an audience or anything, they don't have much of an audience, so she wants him to go see it, and, uh, quickly he realizes that he's talking to Maggie Banks, who apparently is one of the biggest Broadway flops of all time, called Helen Keller the Musical, I thought that was really funny there, um, but basically, he goes, you know, he doesn't really know um, what to do at this point. You know, he's really upset and everything because he's trying to talk to his friends. Rachel's doing something, which I'll get to, but um, he's not included in that. And he's kind of upset with that. Um, and basically, what happens is that he basically ends up um, going to the retirement home to see the performance. But the person that plays a Peter Pan ends up dying. <laughs> I found that kind of funny, even though it's it's an old person, it was kind of funny that they just ended up dying because the way they did it was funny. They're like, oh, Peter Pan, they're like, Peter's dead. I thought that was funny the way they did that. Um, So, they don't really know what to do, but Kurt decides to step in because he's a huge fan of Peter Pan, and he really wants to see, you know, he really wants to be a part of it. So, he decides to step in and play Peter Pan. He sings this song, Memory, which was amazing, but what I loved was that we kind of saw, we saw June, we saw Tim Conway's character, and one other character who I don't remember the actor's name. Shit, what's his name? I, I know, ugh, I can't think of his name right now, oh my god. Um, one of the other old people, um, I, I just, I can't think of his name right now, but we saw him, and he, um, they're all reminiscing about the parts there they've used to play and everything. It was definitely a very well done sequence. And basically, Kurt is now Peter Pan, so he tells um, Rachel and Santana about this, and they are too busy with other stuff, and he's a little upset about this because they won't support him. He supported them all these other times. Why can't they support him? And still, he feels very um, left out of everything, and it, it's really, really sad there because they're not helping him, and I'll get to more of that when we get to Rachel's plot, but Rachel and Santana's plot, but what ends up happening is that... Um, we see that the performance is actually not going well. The rehearsals are not going well. And Maggie um, gets these flowers from her daughter, quote-unquote. And, you know, she constantly is talking about her daughter, Kurt. And Kurt's really happy that her daughter's sending her flowers and everything. And, you know, she says, my daughter couldn't make it, but she did send me these flowers. And it turns out that she's not actually... Because the person in the retirement home says she's not actually... Um, her daughter's not the one sending her flowers. 
it's actually Maggie herself. Her daughter has not come to any performance in years, and that just made me really cry there. I just thought, I thought that was really sad. And Kurt goes over to see, Kurt wants to really help out Maggie. So Kurt goes over to see Maggie Banks' daughter. And I actually really like this scene. We see that Maggie Banks' daughter is now, like, at a um, law firm or something like that. Very professional job. Um, for a second there, I thought I was, like, in uh, in Mad Men or something. Because, you know, it, it was, it was like, Mad Men for a second there. I don't know uh, why I was thinking that. But um, it was kind of funny that they just put us in a law firm all of a sudden. Something like Lee's never done. But... Kurt's talking to this girl, Kurt's talking to, um, Maggie Banks' daughter, basically telling her how she only has one, you know, her mother is 83 years old, she only has so much more chances to see her, and she needs to try at all those opportunities, and her daughter's very, um, upset because, because of Maggie being this huge star, she kind of neglected her daughter, she didn't come to her birthdays and everything, she even missed her graduation, and she's tried to avoid her mother at all costs, and she's very upset at that, but... Kurt then tells her how his mother died, and he regrets not talking to her as much, so, you know, she needs to, basically, every moment counts, and she needs to come for her mother, and I just thought that scene was so, so well done, I love the way that was done, and that was just, it, it was really, really well done, in my opinion, I, I love that, personally, I thought that was great, um, so Kurt's getting ready for his opening night, and Blaine is there, and we get a really sweet Kurt and Blaine scene, Blaine says, oh, this is the happiest I've seen you, um, in, in years, I thought that was definitely really well done, um, Kurt goes over to, Kurt goes over to, um, to Maggie, the performance starts, um, for, they don't sing a Peter Pan song, they sing Lucky Star, um, by Madonna, which I thought that was, uh, pretty adorable, the way they did that, because, I mean, June Squibb has an adorable voice, personally, she is probably the most adorable guest star they've had on this show, but her daughter comes, and I just, I was like, yes, her daughter came, not only did her daughter come, but Rachel, Santana, Sam, Blaine, and all of them, they're all there to see Kurt, and I just thought that was very, very well done, I love the way that was done, and the performance ends up going really well, Maggie reconnects with her daughter, and everything's okay there, so, now, in order for me to talk about the rest of the episode, um, let's get to Rachel's plot, which, uh, basically, Rachel's plot was, she's getting constantly bad reviews. Now that she's made this, you know, lie to Sydney, and is basically on the verge of losing her spot in Funny Girl, she's getting all these bad reviews. They're calling her unprofessional, they're saying they're not seeing the show anymore because she's just not good in it. Um, you know, she's, it's going to her head and everything, which I was pretty convinced that once Rachel got this, it would go to her head, because in the past, things like this have gone to her head, so... Rachel wants to somehow fix it, and she's trying way too hard to fix it. She sees this woman putting her dog into a purse, and she's like, excuse me, I don't think you should do that, and I'm kind of like, Rachel, that's none of your business. Seriously, don't don't bother someone when it's really none of your business, but she's like yelling at this lady, and she decides to start a dog rescue thing called Broadway Bitches, which her, Rachel, her, Santana, and Mercedes are gonna work at, and Santana is basically her secretary right now, um, which I thought was kind of funny the way they did that. Um, you know, Santana's her secretary. Definitely Santana. Again, again, great friend to Rachel. I love seeing this very nice side of Santana, not being rude or anything. But going back to Kurt, you know, Kurt's very neglected because because of Rachel starting this dog business. They they go to see all these dogs. They get all these dogs, and it, it doesn't end up going well for Rachel because because of her doing what she did. Um, you know, because of her doing what she did, she ends up, um, getting hurt by these dogs, and it's a very funny scene, you know, Blaine and Artie are there, and they're like, oh, look, it's Rachel Berry, they're trying to pretend that she's not this huge star, that they, they don't know her and everything, that they're not her friends, I thought that was definitely really well done, um, yeah, that was definitely really, really funny, this whole episode, by the way, very funny, a lot of really funny scenes in this episode, um, but what ends up happening is, uh, Kurt goes over to Rachel, you know, basically saying, why can't you be there for me? I've been there for you all these times, and they say, well, Rachel, you know, is a star now, this is for her, and Santana says, Kurt, this is for Rachel's image, this is really not something that we can help you with, it's nothing, it's out of our control, basically, and Kurt says, Rachel is not doing this for the dog, she's doing it for herself, and she needs to realize that, and I just thought that was definitely a very well done, because Rachel was doing it for herself, she really was, and it's interest. it's gonna be interesting to see, um, I, I was wondering what was gonna happen there with, uh, with Rachel, I thought it was definitely really interesting there with Rachel, because I, I just thought that was definitely very well done. So, uh, Rachel, uh, decides to help, she's helping out these dogs, 
And guess who comes up to her? The dog owner. She and the dog owner start to get into a lot of fights and everything. It's not going well for her and the dog owner. And the dog owner tells her the same exact thing that Kurt told her. And by the way, Rachel really needs to hear this advice. Because Rachel was just... She was doing it for herself. I understand that Rachel was trying to fix things, you know, with her image and try to fix that and things like that because she had ruined it before. But seriously, she was going a little too far in this episode, in my opinion. Um, the dog owner comes up to her and she basically tells her, you are stuck up, you are, con you know, you are stuck up, you are getting, this is, you are conceited, you only care about yourself, and you're only doing this for yourself, and... I know how to run these dogs, you don't, and until you realize that, then basically fuck you. She didn't say fuck you, but that's what she was basically saying, is that I, fuck you, you're a terrible person, and it's kind of true what Rachel was doing, because Rachel was only really doing it for herself, and she needed to realize that, so I was glad that that dog owner gave her a reality check, because as soon as that happens, you know, Rachel, Santana, they all go to see Kurt, it's very well done, and at the very end, Rachel's uh, being interviewed um, by the, um, by this person, um, by this person, um, basically this interviewer, and she says, who came up with the idea, and she says, my publicist did, and Kurt did as well, and I just thought that was very great that she included Kurt, and she says, from now on, it's gonna be a partnership between the two of us, and now Rachel and Kurt are gonna be working together, but my question is, do you think that it's starting to go to Rachel's head? I do think it is going to her head, and it looks like it's going to continue to us. She still has that TV pilot, which we didn't really hear about in the episode. We're going to hear about that in the next episode. But I am wondering what's going to happen there. Now, the only other thing to talk about is Sam and Mercedes. Sam, along with Rachel and Santana, Sam and Mercedes also got the dogs. But Sam had this one dog named McConaughey, which I thought was kind of funny that the dog's name was McConaughey. Um, in a very funny scene, by the way, I loved I Melt With You. I love when they did that. Very cute there. Um... But basically, McConaughey is just destroying all of the um, all of her furniture, and you know they, he destroys the furniture. He destroys Mercedes' weaves. He destroys her wig, her wigs, her her um her shoes, her jewelry, and she just goes ape shit on Sam. It was hilarious to watch. Definitely, that was probably the funniest scene in the episode. And by the way. Amber Riley's funniest performance by far was in that scene. I just thought that was hilarious. And she basically tells him, you need to train these dogs. You need to do what you can to train these dogs. He's trying to train the dogs. And it kind of works. But the problem is, Mercedes is asking him, why do you feel so passionate about this dog? And here's where it started to get a little bit emotional. He says, I'm feeling passionate about this dog because you are leaving for your tour soon. And I want to have someone to be with me. I want to still have a companion of some sort. Who better to be my companion than man's best friend? And Mercedes says, oh, so, you know, I, basically she says, so you're, the dog's more important than, you know, she says the dog's more important than me, and Sam says no, and basically Mercedes says that, um, you know, he needs to take the dog back, they can't keep the dog and everything, and I kind of feel, and she says, you're so attached to your dog, but we still haven't figured out our own relationship. And he says he wants to marry and everything, and I kind of wonder if they're setting up the finale here, because they're definitely having a lot of problems, and the next episode they're having a lot of problems as well. So I'm wondering if Sam and Mercedes are going to break up. I'm thinking they're probably going to break up in the finale, and that's how that's what's going to happen to them in the finale. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen there. But the end of the episode, it's not really resolved, because they don't know what to do with these dogs, you know, Sam and Mercedes are talking, and they're saying, what are we gonna do about these dogs, and Sam says, well, we can't take them back to the homeless shelter, to the shelter, and Mercedes says, well, we'll figure something out, and I'm thinking that Sam's probably gonna keep McConaughey, because he wants to have some sort of a companion, um, now the episode ends with everyone singing, take me home tonight, let me talk about that for a second, that was by far my favorite performance of the entire season, I don't care what you say, besides, um, the Don't Stop Believing, you know, the Don't Stop Believing, that's, that's my f favorite performance in the entire season, um, this was probably my second favorite, because it was all the characters from the entire episode, everyone, basically, including the old people, including the dogs, and I just thought that was very, very well done, you know, the way they had the, you know, Maggie Banks in there, and all of the elderly people in there, I thought that was really well done, the way they had the dogs in there was very well done, and I loved that, and I, you know, I gotta give applause to Chris Colfer in this episode. I mean, he, you did an amazing job in this episode. You finally gave Kurt something to do that had nothing to do with Blaine, and I thought that was very well done, and I love that about this episode. Next week's episode. I think next week's finale is probably going to be a lot better than 
last year's finale. Last year's finale, as you know, was probably, in my opinion, the worst episode of Glee ever. It's not only the worst episode of Glee, it's probably the worst finale I've ever seen, because it literally nothing happened in it. Um, but it looks really great, the next finale. You know, Rachel's gonna have this problem with the TV people, she doesn't know if she's gonna get in or not, that's gonna be interesting. Blaine, you know, Kurt's gonna find out that Blaine lied to him about the whole June thing, I think that's gonna be really interesting. The weirdest part of the promo, you see a scene with Blaine and Brittany, Brittany's topless, Blaine is shirtless as well, they're in bed together, so are Blaine and Brittany gonna have sex and sleep together? I can only think that's going to happen if they get drunk or something. Either way, that's going to be very funny, but I just thought that was really, really weird. And, and the promo, I don't know what that's going to be. If that's going to be like a dream sequence or something, I really don't know, but that looks kind of funny. Um, but um, definitely looking forward to the last episode. I think it's going to be, they have a really good song selection for the next episode as well. You know, you're, they're doing a lot of really great songs, especially um, the last the last song of, of the season is going to be a group number, which I think is perfect because that's how it should end is on a group number. Either way, I think the season's going to end in a very big way. But the finale's next week. I cannot wait for it. Let me know what you guys saw this episode. I personally loved it. One of my favorite episodes of the season. I love the Kurt stuff. I love the Rachel stuff. I love the Sam Mercedes plot that's not concluded yet. I'm wondering where that's going to go. But that's it for my review. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be for tonight's episode of Awkward. So, see you then. Bye.